Hey everyone, here's a really fun interview that I did with Logan Lynn. As you know, I love to meet people on Twitter and then have them on my show. I've had Freddie Prince Jr., Valerie Bertinelli, and now check out this really fun interview with Logan Lynn. I hope you enjoy as much as I did. Hey Logan, thank you so much for joining me today. <laughs> Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm super excited. The thing I love about uh, doing a cooking channel is that I think food is really community. So I love having a lot of just different people from different walks of life and different professions join on because I think we all can relate to food, right? I can for sure. <laughs> what are some of your favorite things to, to eat or drink? I mean, I am all burritos all the time, basically, which has been a lifelong process that just continues as I grow, have grown up. Um, and I have not grown out of that. I am still burrito dude. I love pizza. I am vegan and okay. have been for, for many years. So I do a creative thing around my burrito making now. I'm not just getting them from anywhere, but um, I love that. I love Italian food. I love comfort stuff. Like I'm from the Midwest. So like okay. you give me a casserole and I'm yours forever, basically. <laughs> Where did you grow up? I grew up in a really small town uh, in rural Nebraska called York, Nebraska, which was like an hour south of Lincoln. It was nowhere, um, which had its own sets of challenges, but the food was, you know, that thing you get in the middle of nowhere where it's just like everything in a fridge all baked to get together at the church potluck or whatever. It definitely, um, uh, I think, influenced my taste buds. But you're not in Nebraska now, right? Oh, I'm sorry to everyone out in Nebraska. <laughs> that was a trauma response. I grew up there in the 90s. I'm sure it's lovely now. Um, I live in Portland, Oregon. I moved okay. away from Nebraska to Can the big city of Kansas City uh, in high school. And then San Francisco, LA, and, and Portland have sort of been where I've um, boomeranged back and forth from since. It's great up there. I actually have a handful of really good friends up there. I lived in San Francisco for about 10 years and yeah. I live in Sacramento now. Yeah. And a lot of my friends left San Francisco and went to, to Portland. Um, yeah. yeah, I have experienced that. Yeah, it's like a thing. It feels very much the same. And now that the prices of housing are the same, it's like you can't really tell where you are. Also, now that we're all inside all the time, it really doesn't matter where you are. It could be in Nebraska and I wouldn't even be upset about it. Nebraska. Sorry, Nebraska. <laughs> Listen, uh, Nebraska should be apologizing to me. <laughs> I'm from Ohio, actually. Um, oh, and Cedar we, Point. Yeah, so we moved out here when I was three, and I have this shirt that says, friends don't let friends live in Ohio that I always like to wear around my family, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, some of them appreciate it and some of them don't. <laughs> and yeah, if funny, funny is funny. It doesn't matter if it's appreciated always. <laughs> So what's, what's going on with you in Portland YFC states? Are you doing anything specific to the area or? Well, no one's doing anything specific to the area right now. I don't, I'm pretty sure Portland still exists out there. I've been in my house since March of last year. Okay. Um, and when I say in my house, I really do really mean in my house and around my house. <laughs> I have not gone down off the hill. So um, anyway, your question was, am I doing place-based stuff in Portland? Not really. Uh, I work with Portugal the Man. The, they're a Grammy award-winning band. I help them do advocacy work. And we've been partnered on that for years now. They're all based here. So in that way, in that sense, like, yes. Um, and then I, you know, I work on music. I'm a singer, songwriter, musician with a new record coming out later this okay. year. Um, have been busy during quarantine. I also like turned into a tech bro somehow and like helped um, spearhead and launch the dot gay domain platform over the last year as well. So I'm stuck in here currently, but I'm like really churning stuff out. Yeah. I mean, it's like, what else are you going to do? Right. I kind of feel like, I, you know, yeah. sometimes say to myself, Oh, maybe I shouldn't work so much. It's like, but what else can you really do right now? It I feels mean, like the thing that's going to at least like allow us to have something to show for this time when it's all over. Like I'm normally all about self-care and balance, but like not right now. Just work, work, <laughs> work. La, la, la. Let me know when it's over. Well, I think like too, like when you're in that creator space, like when you're kind of trapped, it's like sort of you just kind of get spinning, you know? I mean, it's, you know, that's kind of how it goes, right? 
<laughs> yes, I am definitely spinning, sometimes in, sometimes out. <laughs> so tell us about uh, the your album that's coming out. When is it coming out? What's yeah. it? What's the music? Can you play or sing anything or you know anything? Well, I generally speaking can't play or sing, but um, <laughs> I do keep putting out records. Uh, <laughs> I released a like a little single preview of what I what I've been working on in October of last year. It was a called Rich and Beautiful. I had a music video that I partnered with Gucci on, and then um, it's so it's it's that that's a song from the record. Uh, I did there are some exciting things happening around the record that i'm not totally allowed to talk about just yet but just stay tuned god i hate it when people do that but this is a legit stay tuned um and so i've been working on like trying to figure out how you do music videos during covid how you do <laughs> like just all the stuff that one normally would be working on right now in addition to like making the record like it is just a really it's a complicated thing. I will say that all of the stuff that has forced pivots in my world, I do think has sort of strengthened the work in a way. Okay. So like, I'm trying, I'm, I am in no way like a glass half full type of person, yeah. um, but I do feel hopeful about all this. And I, I do actually think that I've been really, um, there's been something magic that has happened in the midst of this, extreme solitude and I think fear and whatever else I've, I've been kind of going through it has actually been sort of the gateway to something good I'm sorry if I missed it in that did you say the release date of the fall fall okay if I finish it in time yeah right now <laughs> fall I like to say fall winter because then I have like a little bit of <laughs> daisy time yeah. but it's gonna be fine like the things that are unknown are not on my end which is awesome like i'm not the one who's messing up but like the printing of records like pressing records is like that's jacked up right now like nobody's in the factories and so right. you just kind of, like i can say when i when i'll be done with the record but like when it actually hits stores or whatever is there's a lot of factors but sometime this year and if not next year okay fair enough fair enough so that uh kind of coming back to your uh burrito uh habit because um, uh, i too share uh pizza burritos italian food i also like really really like spicy stuff a lot um i'm big into that is mexican food like a big part of like just every day that's kind of what yeah. you live off of yeah like i can't think of anything else i want to eat ever <laughs> and if i try i'm usually like mm. That was okay. It should have been. Like, I know that the one thing is going to hit the spot. And I would, I would say that that's expanded to all kinds of wraps. Okay. <laughs> in that, like, sometimes I'm like, I'm going to have a hummus burrito with some veggies. Now I'm going to, you know, like, it's very, okay. like, not just Mexican, but certainly rooted in Mexican food. And growing up with just, like, you know, I'm part water, part quesadilla. <laughs> I feel that. Um, white inspires you to uh, go vegan? Well, I met a little baby pig on the streets of Hollywood named Petunia and she was wearing a ball gown and she like came right up to me on the street and we had like a real moment where I was just like somehow touched by the pig in the dress. And I just from that moment on was like, well, I can never eat bacon again. I can never eat pig again. And in fact, you are a queen and you should be like somehow like honored and not not certainly not eaten um and i just could not get petunia the pig out of my head and that sort of continued i used to be real gross about it like i used what i want still when i think about meat is yeah. arby's <laughs> I, I, I used to like we're not talking like i want steak like i want that weird squeezed cheese bleached beef nonsense um, but it sort of started with the pig and fanned out. So like I went from Arby's as my self-care plan or whatever to I'm going to be pescatarian. And then I was like, crab legs and this is great. But then Vice News put out a whole 
story about how 99% of <laughs> that data is wrong, but a bunch of the fish in the sea have worms in them. Most of them have worms. And I read this whole thing and the restaurant that they included in that article was my restaurant, my fancy fish restaurant here in Portland. So uh, at that moment, I was just like, we're done. I can't like, I can't with any of this. I just, I know about plants. I trust plants. Like people have been doing this for eons. Like just give me something that has never had a mom. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. So when like vegan wise, like what do you put in your burritos? Is it just all like, like beans? Do you do like meat substitutes? Is it? Yes. Like, yeah, no, uh, I'm, I do certainly refried beans. I like the organic, I eat organic. I'm like one of these guys that shops at Whole Foods. Um, but I like the, like the way that the old school beer, burrito beans used to taste in the eighties. So I have been getting now the, or like those sort of more mainstream companies who I'm not going to name because they're not paying me. They have been doing organic stuff. And so I, I tend to go there as opposed to like something better, like back to my whole Arby's thing. Um, <laughs> but yum on beans, yum on vegetables. I do very much like impossible meat but cannot cook myself. I realize who I'm talking to and I, I probably shouldn't say that. I know I can go, I go watch your videos and make it. No, I don't, I, what it is is that I don't cook. And so when I have impossible meat, it's usually imported from some delivery service. Um, <laughs> I like chicken nuggets that aren't real. Wait, what was that? Is there any cooking that goes on in the house at all or is it just, is it all delivery? Well, I cooked in that music video, but that, <laughs> it was acting. Yeah, no, I microwave a lot of things. I am, I know how to like, I know how to cook. And I will say like with pizza, I do have like a pizza tray that I use in an actual oven. Okay. But for the most part, I'm not really making a lot of stuff myself. I do a lot of delivery and a lot of, you know, really easy. If it makes it into a wrap, great. If it is just that the tortilla makes it into my hand and then gets dipped into things, that's also acceptable. Since it's not just Mexican food and it extends to wraps, it's just really the format, right? Things in a tortilla are the way to go. I think, yeah, we've identified that I'm just like a wrap person now. <laughs> and But like not if I'm at a burger place, like not that anyone's at burger place, but if, when I go back into the world at a restaurant, like I'm not like, can you make that burger a wrap? Like I'm not an insane You should, you should person. start asking people that and just see what happens. Does this come in a wrap? Uh, <laughs> no, I don't want to be that person, but I do love a wrap if it's on the menu. So what are some of your favorite, like, I guess, like flavor profiles? Like one of the things I do, like I always kind of try to make up something, I rake up a recipe based on these interviews. And so like, do you like spicy things, like sweet over savory or, you know, what are sort definitely, of some flavors that you like? Yeah, definitely savory over sweet, not okay. sweet, not into it. I like um, spicy for sure, probably pepper spicy more than like a wasabi type spice. Okay. And I like stuff that I'm embarrassed to talk about, you know, like I know, like we have to make a right into like American chairs. Okay. Um, okay. And, uh, you know, I think recently, like when I get delivery stuff, it's like somebody who's figured out how to make a vegan tuna melt okay. or like, you know, like I'm into this, like make it seem like real food scenario. Right. Uh, and there are some better vegan cheeses now that are available. Yes. Like for a while there, I was like, science, why? Yeah. Like you like you built all this other stuff, like you're, I'm suffering. Yeah. Um, but they finally, I think in the last few years have made some really great products that are not where you're just like, mm, I like this because it's a ball of fat and salt. Right. <laughs> right? Like there's actually something else going on there, which is yeah. cool. I think for a while I was like, only into junk food, but like the vegan healthy version of junk food. So often like, you know, the way to my heart is to recreate something that is um, naughty and yummy, but but like isn't now. Okay, I'm like it. Well, that's, I mean, I'm liking this. I'm liking the idea of like what, I'm, what we get to come up with as far as food goes, you know? Um, so what are some of the, I guess, you know, when you say like naughty junk food things, what are some of those things? 
I'm picturing that you're like a potato chips on a sandwich kind of guy. Mmm, potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like definitely into tater tots okay. and uh, salsa, guac. I'm into like iceberg lettuce. <laughs> And, you know, I've, I've, I've grown up just a little bit where I've incorporated other greens. I do love right. a, like a green juice. I sound incredibly unhealthy. I'm actually not. It's just that my cravings have to be managed because they are from the devil. Um, and so I'm just <laughs> trying to find ways of still triggering that flavor experience. Like, so I grew up in this Nebraska hellhole. One of the restaurants there was called Runza. And it's like a cabbage pie the hot pocket thing delicious so my uh my sister-in-law for christmas like figured out how to remake those and they sent them my way like that was lovely um i do think like nachos piles of stuff over sauced all my jam okay Okay, so you probably are a big wet burrito fan then. Wet right? burrito, yeah, yeah, love it. Love the wet burritos myself. I'm always like, can you just can you just drown that in salsa? You know, it's just like yeah. yeah. <laughs> no such thing as too much sauce or too many different types of salsas on a burrito. I also love tomatoes and black. I like olives and mushrooms. So I like I sound like I'm a four year old because in some ways I am, but like. I have a I dress like one, so I understand. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Speaking of which, as do you ever not wear Gucci? I see a lot of Gucci in your timeline. Never. Your timeline. No, no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mostly wear Gucci. Yeah, I started working with them a few years back when I did a tour, and then they did they dressed me and Jay for film stuff I was doing, and then. I, that sort of morphed into this campaign that I did, but then the world closed down and I just kept all the clothes um, <laughs> and just incorporated them into my regular life. And then that turned into a kind of a campaign in and of itself, which led to more clothes that now I wear. So okay. it's, a, it's been a journey with them, <laughs> but one that I'm very, very into. And one that I think about while I'm making the junk food burritos, because I definitely want to like maintain my current size. It's hard in um, quarantine to not turn into a perfect circle. I, yeah. I wanted to, I feel that I could, I, I feel like I'd be down with being in a perfect circle, but <laughs> I'm just I'm just not going there yet. I feel that it's, um, yeah, the, there's definitely challenges to being just trapped in a house all the time and like not like, and just sort of the days running together, you know? Yeah. What it's day like, even is it? Yeah, exactly. It's March 248th. It's, that's Sounds like, like a social construct to me, this day yeah. and time thing. Yeah, no, I had to get a treadmill. Like I got like a low profile treadmill. I, I like walk every day. I'm doing the thing I'm supposed to do. And I can make much worse choices with delivery than I make. But... <laughs> You know, it's a slippery slope during this time. Yeah, it is. It's funny because, like, I, I feel like I've ordered so much food, you know? I mean, like, I, I and part of it's, like, I, I didn't really eat out a ton beforehand, but I feel like now this is, like, oh, God, I have to cook one more thing. And I cook a lot as it is, you know? It's just, like, hey, okay, hey. yeah, I'm just going to order. I'm just, I'm just done, you know? <laughs> I mean, you like to cook, too, yeah. right? So, like, that's really saying something. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there were, there's been several days where people come here three times. Hey, you got to do what you got to do to get by. <laughs> I'm hungry and I'm stuck. <laughs> um, so I'm definitely thinking I'm going to do some sort of burrito type thing for this. I feel like I haven't actually, I don't think I've actually done a burrito recipe on my love YouTube. Love first. So, you know, and I love wet burritos. So it gives me an excuse. I'm kind of leaning towards something breakfasty, like a breakfast burrito, like tater tot type thing. What else do you typically put in there with, like, you know, if you're doing a breakfast burrito? Well, someone has generally made that for me if I do a breakfast burrito, so we'd have to ask them. But I do like hash browns, so you're on the right, you're on the right path there. Um, I really like fresh salsa and fresh guac. That to me feels like what you need for a breakfast burrito. And I love there's like this weird egg substitute that I don't currently make, maybe it's called, I don't want to say what it's called, but 
it's an egg substitute that one of the vegan fast food restaurants uses. And it's great. I love it. Well, I actually, I can't, um, I'll even say the brand. I, there was this people last year that I spoke with. They're called Zero Egg. And um, they make I a really- they confirm or deny that. <laughs> they make a really, really good fake vegan egg. Like it's just, you know, it's really delicious. Yeah, I feel like the more you can make something taste like what would the good breakfast burrito at the burrito place taste like, but yeah. vegan, like that's the goal. Yeah. Uh, in fact, actually, Zero Egg sent me a whole pouch of their their egg mix, so I'll I'll use that in the the recipe. <laughs> Yum, I'm hungry now. I didn't know we were going to talk about food. Yeah, did. So I have eaten before. <laughs> I think there's pizza in my future. That's kind of, I've been craving that all day today. Like I woke up and I was like, I'm like, I'm just half tempted to like door dash a pizza for breakfast, you know? And I, I've your been- shirt, out, you Your know? shirt is also leading you in that direction. I, know. <laughs> I feel like everything is like, I woke up wanting pizza. I'm like, oh, I'll wear the pizza shirt. Like pizza's probably gonna happen. Do what you're being drawn to. That's a sign. <laughs> What's uh, what's on the menu for you the rest of the day? What are you craving today? Well, I'm probably gonna go in there and put a tortilla in some dip. <laughs> I don't know. I I'm gonna you know like talking about Impossible Burgers just now made me feel like I wanted that. So maybe I'll do that. There is a certain fast food restaurant that serves Impossible Burgers that I quite enjoy. <laughs> Um, now, now, are you uh, 100% strict with the vegan diet? Like, do you ever like kind of cheat on it or? Cause I, I don't, know, yeah. Okay, so, so like <laughs> I'm vegan just with what I eat. So I still wear leather. And so like that, there's a little cognitive dissonance around Petunia the pig and like, it's fine with the furniture and the pillows. But with the, um, with the food itself and why it's lasted this long and I've been successful, I do a harm reduction thing where like once every six weeks, literally it's in my phone on my calendar. I allow myself one, usually one pizza or one regular burrito that has cheese. Certainly no meat, but I okay. scratch that cheese itch once every six weeks. And it has been sustainable because I start obsessing about it yeah. every five weeks. Cheese is and addictive. So like, yeah, man, yum, enzymes. So I uh, give myself that, you know, I'm a person in long-term recovery from drugs and alcohol as well. I'm about to have my 13 year anniversary. And the way I got well was over years doing harm reduction where it was like, okay, you can't do this, but you can do this. You can't do this much, but you can do this much. Right. And over time that led to actual long-term um, actual sobriety. So I have a history of harm reduction working and I just applied that to my veganism because right. I wanted to be more plant-based, make a change and not do this thing where I'm like failing. That is discouraging to me. So like yeah. just plan to fail eight times a year and I'm good. Well, I feel like too, like when you allow yourself those opportunities just to be human, um, you know, then you don't have that like sort of like, cause I feel like when I go like, when I go cold turkey on anything and as soon as I screw up, I'm like, well, I screwed up. So I might as well just keep screwing up, you know? So it's like, I think it's a healthy, healthy way to approach that. And, you know, congrats on the sobriety. I know that's Thank a, you. that's a challenge. <laughs> a challenge. And I would say it's been an exceptional challenge during this time. Like yeah. I'm, I'm 13 years in and, and the first few years were really tough. And this last year has been, not the same kind of stuff, but super noticeable. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think just, I mean, in general, this past year, is just an exercise in mental health overall. And yeah. however people deal with that. Totally. <laughs> you know, well, and like people need hugs and like stuff like that, like that used to happen. I just like, I'm absolutely not being hugged for long periods of time now, which I just think is, is not, how I want my life to really be. So yeah. you know, I'm excited for the world to open up where we can like have hugs and, and parties and things again. Well, until we get to the hugging and the partying, um, tell people where they can go and check out the things that all the things that you have your hands in. LoganLynnMusic.com is where all the music stuff is. I'm on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and YouTube, wherever you want to type that little Logan Lynn name, I will appear. 
Um, and then for dot gay stuff, which I'm really excited about, we're, you know, we're making the internet safer for LGBTQ people with every name that gets registered, we create a safer internet. So um, if you go to ohey.gay, you can find your name there or at any registrar like GoDaddy or Porkbun, any of those places, but it's new. We just launched um, so you can actually get really good names for super um, cheap. Nice, nice. Well, thank you for hanging out with me today. And we're glad that we finally got to make this happen with, you know, bumpy scheduling and all that stuff and talk about burritos and Yum. various things. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. Nice to connect. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, I will get to recipe testing and I'll figure out when uh, we can release this thing. And please keep me um, updated on the album and stuff like that when you get to the fall or winter release and we'll go from there. Sounds good, man. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Take care, Logan. Bye. Wasn't that fun? Okay, thanks for tuning in. I will see you guys next time. Be sure to check out the recipe.